I'm excited to be having a chance to speak with uh, one of our most thrilling artists, Sonia Yancheva, who made her debut at the Met uh, in 2013, seems like yesterday, uh, as in the role of, of Gilda and Rigoletto. Um, but, uh, you know, I think one of the, and so hi, hi, Sonia, and thank you for, thank you for joining me. Um, you know, I think one of the most um, uh, heroic uh, feats for any soprano uh, is to, uh, to sing roles on the stage of the Met, particularly when there are roles that a soprano is singing for the very first time in their lives. I mean, you know, most sopranos uh, sing their role, sing roles elsewhere to prepare themselves for the vast stage and auditorium of the Met. Sonia is uh, fearless and, uh, and, and apparently with, <laughs> with, with good reason, because she has actually made role debuts on the Met at least four or five times, I think. Um, and in, and uh, you know, roles like Tosca and uh, Louisa Miller, you know, killer, killer soprano roles. She has uh, debuted on the stage of the Met. Uh, which, and those are heroic feats in themselves. So you really are a profile in courage, I would say, for, for a soprano. And, you know, I think, you know, among the more extraordinary feats, when I first got to know Sonia after her debut, uh, she was going to make, her, her official debut was actually supposed to be in 2014, but she came to our rescue in 2013 to make her debut, as I said, as Gilda and Rigoletto. And then in 2014, after giving birth uh, to her first child, um, she assured me that it was no problem. And four weeks later, uh, she was at, on, four weeks after giving birth, she was on stage of the Met rehearsing um, uh, for Mimi, a role she also had not sung, I think, previously. And um, so, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is an, obviously an extraordinary human being and, and an extraordinary artist. So before we go any further, um, I wanted just to play an excerpt just to get you all in the mood for the great artists who we're speaking to today. So this is an excerpt from uh, the first act, the first act aria from La Boheme, which was an HD trans, a live in HD transmission in the 2017-18 uh, season, a season in which Sonia actually sang three different live in HD roles, which is a record in itself for any one artist in one season. So, Sonia, now you're getting ready to embark on a new adventure. Yes. Uh, 
which is uh, next week, you're going to, uh, at a time when COVID cases are spiking all over Europe, and in fact, all the German opera houses are shut down right now, uh, you are going to bravely be driving across the Swiss-German frontier with your family in tow uh, to uh, arrive at this magnificent Baroque cloister uh, called the uh, Bad Schusen in Bad Schusenried, I think, or I'm probably not pronouncing it right, um, in Ulm, which is a, 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 a district of Germany not far from Bavaria, about, uh, I guess, about a four and a half, five, five hour drive from your house in Switzerland. And um, you're, you're seeing an incredibly challenging uh, program, which I'm, I myself am very excited to hear, uh, which demonstrates all of your artistry and a wide range of vocal styles. So tell us about your program and uh, what, what, what we, what, what's in store for our listeners who will be tuning in on, on November 21. You know, I I was uh, I'm really excited for this for this adventure now. You know, only the idea of taking my car going somewhere, even with the babies on top of the car and, <laughs> and the suitcases, it's it's incredible sensation because, uh, you know, we we're used to this kind of life and we're missing it, of course. And when yeah, when I when I thought about the program, I, I said, okay, I I really need to go really personal. Uh, with this audience, the Met audience, I miss so much. Last time I was in New York singing for you was um, in 2019 in January. So it's really a long time ago. And between all these months and, uh, and, and years, many things happened to me. I changed myself as well. I became a mother for a second time. So I thought something really personal, maybe things that I'm working on, maybe things I was supposed to debut on your stage in, in New York and maybe some future <laughs> areas and, 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 and parts I am dreaming and I will do on, 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 on the stage of the Met as well, like Madame Butterfly, just to say, to name one. Um, it's a good one. Yeah, it's a good one. And um, yes, and um, everything came in, in a very smooth program. Then I wanted to break into something more, um, let's say um, for easy listening something that can put a little uh, cream on our uh, souls today like Edith Piaf you know I, I like this kind of, uh, of of music and it's relaxing me it's relaxing the audience and also I like always to do these bridges between the past and today so to show that classical music was basically the pop music of uh, the people 300 years ago, <laughs> the popular music of the people 300 years ago. So um, I, I was mostly concerned about that. And this program came out in a very nice, splendid um, uh, line. And I was very happy that you agreed on. And so now we're going to, to do it. <laughs> well, how, how could I not agree? I mean, I should mention, I mean, the, the Edith Piaf you mentioned is sort of the, uh, the final kind of... Uh, uh, icing on the cake, but this program is incredibly intense. You're singing uh, uh, Returno Vincitor from Aida, mm -hmm. uh, the song to the moon from Rusalka, um, an aria from uh, Le Vili, Puccini's uh, opera, which is never heard. Um, yeah, I'm song. curious to know why you chose that. You're singing the, the big, uh, the big uh, Trovatore soprano aria, uh, uh, Bohème aria, not the one we just heard, another one. Uh, you're singing uh, uh, Purcell and Handel, uh, Un Bel D, you mentioned from Adam Butterfly, which in itself is a major feat. And then this spectacular 15-minute um, uh, work from Il Pirata, which mm -hmm. is a, a real bel canto fireworks display that's been sung uh, memorably by Caballé and, and Callas and uh, other great divas of the past. And, piece of music you know and it's very theatrical and opera is about theater and I wanted so much of course we are not on the stage of the Met we don't have the same light maybe <laughs> and it's not this amazing hall that 4,000 people are listening to us maybe much more <laughs> from from their computer right. but it's not the same but I needed to go into the theater into something really um, right. you know strong <laughs> We should look actually, uh, I don't know if, if uh, Dan, you can hear us, but do you have the image of, of the, uh, this magnificent Baroque cloister where 
uh, Sonia is going to be performing. If we can put that up on the screen. Wow. Yeah, that's that's uh, quite spectacular. So our, our location scouts in Germany found this, and you'll be we're, we're going to build a stage in the middle for you. Um, okay. That uh, and you're you're surrounded by um, a lot of a lot of uh, statuary. So you'll have you'll have uh, inanimate people in the room with you. <laughs> that's your that's your audience, the statues, um, and and of course the the. the um, uh, the thousands of people who will be tuning in. You know, I should mention, you, me you mentioned that people can watch it on their computers, but I think one of the things, one aspect of this that our audience should, should know, um, and for those of you who are older and who are not computer experts, uh, ask your child or grandchild to show you how to pair the signal coming into your computer with your home entertainment system. Yeah. Because you can watch these programs on a big screen, if you have one, uh, with a great sophisticated uh, uh, audio system and really uh, capture the fidelity and, and picture quality of a very sophisticated multiple camera shoot. You know, where Gary Halverson, who directs our live and HD shows and has directed you and Tosca and all these other wonderful operas, um, is the director of these programs. We have, we'll have like uh, six or seven cameras in that room with you, including cranes and moving cameras and um, and, and excellent uh, audio produ production. So uh, this, this performance really can be experienced on the highest level. It's as good quality as watching, watching one of our live and HD shows in a movie theater. Um, That's so, so important. Classical music deserves the highest quality. Really. Well, <laughs> well, we have you to thank for that. And we have, and we have to serve you with the highest quality to, uh, which is what you deserve. So the the um, so the program is is very exciting. I mean, is there one is 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 the uh, Il Parata for you the highlight of the program? Is that the climax of the program? Well, maybe they are all very important because uh, most of most of them are extraordinary women and extraordinary uh, characters. But maybe Il Pirata is the the much uh, the uh, the strongest maybe because it's you know someone dying. Um, because of losing the loved one. And uh, this is so often we see it in operas. <laughs> Maybe it's the most operatic piece in all the program. Yeah, I can, I can say. And also I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying singing this kind of repertory. I think it's important that we as ambassadors of, 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 uh, of our art, of, of the classical music, we are responsible to bring sometimes uh, pieces that are not um, that, often heard on stage. So it's important for the audience because we must inform them about pieces that maybe they never heard about. And this one is one of the most beautiful musics I ever heard. So I think it deserves to be there. <laughs> when you when you say, you talk about the characters of, uh, of these operas, how much of an influence on your uh, choices when you choose repertoire to sing, how much of, how important is it what the uh, character is like? I mean, uh, is it really, a dramatic choice that you make first before before you make them before you decide musically to do something it has to be a character what makes you what what are the characters you like to play well yes uh, my first um let's say vision about a, a part if i can do it or not is the is the psychological part am i able to go into the skin of this lady because some of them you know are not really my cup of tea <laughs> And some some of them are really connected to me, even sometimes with um, with with true stories, something that really happened to me in my life. Um, sometimes we don't really have the decision, but I'm I'm uh, we don't really have the time to decide. Uh, but when you call me sometimes and you say, "Hey, Sonia, <laughs> would you jump in?" <laughs> And actually, it, it, it will be my debut. But I am a, I am a classical music freak. I'm all the time listening to different parts, and mostly of them I know them. So, um, so um, if you if you if one day you call me and you you tell me about the woman, I will think first about yeah about her character. Can I can I really play this on stage? And then, of course, can I sing it? But I think that with a voice, we can always, um, well, voice is not unlimited, but we can always um, give um, another interpretation, something that is coming from us. It's interesting, you know, first of all, I should say to our audience that, you know, there are singers who can act and then there are singers 
who really can act. And you were, you were, you were, uh, and I'm not saying this to flatter you, uh, but it's true. You're a director's dream because you, when you arrive um, uh, for a rehearsal, you you completely inhabit the role of the, uh, these roles and and become the characters, uh, mm-hmm. which which is something that is, it's what we all want, but it doesn't always happen in yeah, opera. I think it's so important. It's uh, uh, maybe I mean, of course, musically, I am I am prepared because I've I've been studying music since the age of six, so I know something about styles or <laughs> interpretation or history. Um, but it's it, and and of course vocal technique. But what is really really important to me is um, how to connect my my vocal abilities to um, to to the actress I am. I I always wanted to be very sincere and very direct with the audience, so I can go really into their uh, you know souls and hearts. And when they leave the theater, they think, wow, I think I I um, I, I changed a little bit this night. It's, it's something very ambitious, of course, but I think that theater and opera is about that. It's about changing points of view. That's why it's so important. <laughs> well, I, think, I think what you said, just said so eloquently is really what it is all about. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's what theater and a great, great art should always be. It should move people and, and, and leave them in a different place than when they started. For sure. So, and I think it's interesting, and perhaps that's what drives you to, to uh, uh, choose such a wide variety of roles uh, in so mm-hmm. many different styles, because you are interested in the characters and you don't want to be limited uh, by, by one particular musical uh, you know, well, subset of genre. It would be a prison for me. You know, how can I, how can I say no to, to, to sing a, a part like Popea in Incoronazione di Popea. Everybody asks me this question, but you can sing Aida, you can sing Trovatore, you can sing uh, Mimi and Tosca. Why you want to sing Popea? <laughs> because it seems all of a sudden such a, uh, maybe it sounds easier to them, but it's not because this is really the base of, uh, of, of, of our musical heritage and uh, of, of when, when, where we started. And so um, singing for me, Popea, it's above all giving a rebirth or a chance to rebirth to the story about this woman. That right. was so interesting. But it must be it must be vocally, technically challenging for you to shift mm-hmm. gears. I mean, like in a program that you're singing uh, next Saturday, um, you have to be careful, I imagine, how you s- schedule the, the, it, the individual pieces against each other. So you have Puccini, you have Verdi, um, you have Bellini, um, so you have to, uh, I guess, calculate um, how your voice will respond to these and how you how you build a program that way. Yeah, absolutely. I chose a moment where um, uh, in the program where I can really mix some of the really challenging areas with uh, something more soft, even though not less challenging um, in a in a stylistic way. But um, I think what is most important here is to keep um, 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 the sincerity in in the interpretation and of course to keep the style because you know Handel is planets apart from Verdi and Puccini they are so different but I think I'm so far I'm really happy with my voice because it was always a very um, flexible (laughs) uh, how to say sensation in my court so I could easily jump from one thing to another. Now with age, I should be more careful, of course. <laughs> you, don't, you don't show too many signs of being careful at the moment, the, <laughs> which I'm glad, which I'm very glad for. The, uh, without giving away too many state secrets uh, about the future planning of the Met, you already um, uh, mentioned that you'll be seeing Butterfly in the future, which I'm very excited about. Um, also next season, we already announced uh, that you will be singing uh, Don Carlos, uh, the French version, which is the first time in the Met history, the history of the Met, that we're presenting Don Carlos in French. Um, so that's, and that, is that a new role for you? I don't... No, I already did it in Paris. You did I, it in Paris, right? Yes, a few years ago, yeah. But I can't wait, I think also because the French version of this opera is the most truthful. We can really uh, hear that the composer was was writing in a very French way. It was done for the for the French audience and French theater. So right. I'm, I'm glad to do it in French with Yannick as well. Yes, well, he's very excited to do it with you. Yeah. 
-hmm. And also, um, just to to, to uh, uh, excite our audiences about your some of your future roles, you will be singing in a new production of Fedora in in a, in a future season, which I think is going to be terrific. And uh, we're also planning. You're, you're, you're taking. Yeah. Sorry. I will finally be a princess. <laughs> Uh, a Russian princess. That's even better. <laughs> yeah, and you're, you're, we're also planning. You know, for years we've been exploring the idea of doing a revival of the Ghosts of Versailles, which you're taking on, which is a new repertoire for you. It's a wonderful piece, yeah. and uh, and Norma, you're going to be singing in the future. Too. Yes, that's so. really really exciting. And you know, extremely interesting parts. And uh, for me, it was always so important to build uh, this story with with the Met. You know, I started with Gilda and then uh, a few few years later, okay, like 10 years later, I'm, I'm already facing Norma in this uh, beautiful, enormous hole. For me, this is, it's, it's really challenging, but in the same time, I'm so grateful and I, I feel so satisfied to know I will be doing all this. But you obviously feel comfortable on the stage of the Met. Uh, oh, the, yeah. The acoustics. That's what I forgot to say. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, I will tell you a story. Maybe I never told you about that. But when I first arrived at the Met um, uh, in 2013, because I was jumping in, so I, I really had very, uh, maybe a couple of days of rehearsals, and I couldn't go on stage because the show was already running right. and you had mm -hmm. all shows running. So it was impossible to go and even I didn't even have uh, had an access to see the stage. So I remember when <laughs> my first entry came and I, I was there under the lights and all these people were facing me. I was the new bird. Who is this girl? <laughs> and um, it was, the, the, the feeling was, of course, um, I was I was a little bit scared, I should say, but in the same time, I felt so comfortable. It was like the all the whole embraced me in a way, and then the audience was so attentive. And I'm really missing this. You know, I have moments on the stage of the Met that maybe I, I'll never forget in my life. So well, I really love this theater. <laughs> well, I, I'm grateful to hear you say that, and I'm looking forward to many more. Now, before we we before we finish today. Um, we promised the audience that they, who are listening in, there, there are a number of patrons who are listening in right now live, who have some questions that they submitted ahead of time. So I want to ask, ask you a couple of questions from the audience, if I may. So the, the first question is, have you always known you wanted to be an opera singer or did the passion develop over time? I knew that I, 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 I wanted to be an opera singer and I had to be an opera singer <laughs> when, when I was about 15 years old. And before I was a pianist, so I was following my education as a, as a piano player um, with all the, of course, um, um, how to say, um, all, the, all the stuff that goes around. So chamber music, choruses and but when I was 15, I heard someone singing and uh, this voice was so beautiful. It was a rehearsal for a project we, we were doing uh, in our school. And I asked this person, it was a girl, uh, how can you sing like this? And she said, I never learned it. It's just a gift from God. So uh, I, I was really impressed by her answer, came back home and tried to sing the same. And I had a little angel, my mother around me, who was listening to me and said, look, I think it's very strange that all, all of a sudden you, you sing like that, but uh, you should try it. And that's how it started. Um, it, of course, it's very frustrating for a young person when you're 15 years old, um, you don't understand much <laughs> the life already. And then um, the classical music, yes, it was my love and it is still my love, but um, the opera singing is uh, very uh, demanding. And I remember doing my first rehearsals, my head was turning because of so much air coming into my brain. Um, it was impressive physically and mentally. And then I understood I had to do this for all my life. <laughs> it was a passion, yeah. So here, here's, a, here's another question, which I think relates to the end of what you just said about the physical aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is: be, Is being an opera singer is being an opera singer like being a marathon runner? What do you do to keep in mental, physical, and vocal shape? Oh, you really want to know? <laughs> you know the, audience, the audience wants to know. We're always keeping cool, and we say, "Oh no, I don't do anything. I'm like this since the morning." But it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's a lot of work and of course I gave birth to two kids so I really had the very um, urgent need to come back in in my shape I am very lucky woman because both of my pregnancies didn't really affect my voice or although it affected it in a very positive way which was a nice thing um, so working on my voice I didn't have I didn't have to do that much but working on new repertories because all of a sudden mentally we changed so much with the age and and um, you become more woman or less woman I don't know but um, <laughs> we go into in through different colors so you need to to give to give another interpretation on stage to be another kind of woman so um, but working my body yes I'm working hard every day I'm having massages every day I am following a special um, nutrition program so I, I, I can be really fresh and you know it's not easy, but I have to do it. And it's not only for the job I'm doing, it's just for, for the human being I am or for the woman I am, and just to be happy in my skin. Very good. Um, <laughs> the, uh, all right, I have, uh, there are two more questions. Yeah. Here's one. Uh, what was the defining moment and who was the defining person in your career that opened the world stage for you? Oh, there are so many. But uh, I was really privileged because um, in different years in my career, in my way uh, as a musician, I, I met um, important people. First of all, I met my two teachers. And you know, um, these two personages, these two figures in my life are so important because first, they were the first one after my mother to believe in me. And this for a young singer, for a young artist, it's extremely important. It's maybe maybe the capital thing, the most important thing. That in, in, Bulgar in Bulgaria? The first one was in Bulgaria, and then the second one in Switzerland. And both of them, they they really embraced me. They uh, they, they are like like my second mothers. <laughs> and um, I'm I'm really privileged to 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 have uh, to have these two um, ladies in my life. Um, and then I met uh, William Christie, who is uh, mm -hmm. a Baroque musician you, you know very well, of course. And um, I remember that he came in my conservatory here in the high school in Geneva, and I didn't know anything about Baroque music. I, I had to perform an aria in front of him uh, because it was a public masterclass. We've been only three people chosen. And um, he... Um, it, it was it was a lot from first sight and, and he, he told me uh, you should sing Baroque and I believed him of course I was like a sponge I, I wanted I wanted everything I wanted to know everything about Baroque and um, he opened for me um, incredible doors of, of what is the international touring touring as a musician and 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 how to perform I remember spending maybe an hour or so doing only trills and uh, and different ornaments in the Baroque music with him. So I really feel privileged to, to have met him. And um, then I, I, um, I continued uh, my, my way and um, I found, um, I inscribed myself in, in the uh, Operalia competition. And uh, that was a huge, incredible door, very important door for me. And, you, and you, you won that competition. I won that competition, which was, unbelievable for me i can tell you that the, the that was when i first heard about you actually. exactly maybe yeah and uh and um this is incredible because with only a um, few auditions um or or uh, the final of this competition we are so much exposed and people like you can 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 hear us and and know us and um then i met you then I met many of your colleagues that are running the biggest houses in the world. And, and I think we, each of you were so important in my career because I, I never felt like I was your employee. You wanted to, 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 to tell a story with me and you wanted to find the best, best uh, repertory for me. And, um, and this is how we build it. And uh, it's, it's incredible. And it's not, it's not uh, finished <laughs> still. <laughs> We, we, we don't we don't do that for every soprano. Oh, you have, thank you. You have, to be very, you have to be very special. So here, here's here, here's um, the final audience question: What is your ultimate dream role? 
Do you have one? <sighs> well, this is a very difficult question, you know, <laughs> because there are so many in my head. I have several. Um, there are some parts that are scaring me, like Zalome, you know, <laughs> we talk about that. <laughs> right. and there are others that are not scaring me, but maybe later on I, I discovered that they're monsters and I should not touch them. But um, yeah, I think um, I, I have no obsession about Madame Butterfly, really because um, I like the line of, of, of the musical line. It's very diff different from the other operas that Puccini wrote. And maybe Madame Butterfly is the one that is the most, uh, it's really touching. And you know, sometimes we have this kind of um, loves with, with just a moment in the opera. I, I, sometimes I want to sing an opera just because of the final scene of it. <laughs> <laughs> like is the case with Pirata, Il Pirata, for instance. I could skip all the opera before and sing only this, but of course it's not possible. And uh, with Madame Butterfly is the same. I am in love with the final scene. It's so truthful, it's so touching, it's so, it's, it's, it's you know, incredible. It's, what I, it's why we love opera that much. <laughs> I can't wait to have you singing that in our wonderful production that Anthony Minghella created for the Met. Which, <laughs> Thank you. Even though, even though that was uh, uh, from 2006, it's one of the most beautiful productions that uh, just uh, has worked so so brilliantly for so many years. Anyway, listen, thank you so much, Sonia, for, for joining us today. And, and it's such a pleasure to hear you talking about your art and your life and your plans. and. I know this is a very tough, difficult, challenging time for you and other artists uh, and for opera companies, but I, I have a feeling listening to you today gives me hope for, for our mutual future. And I know that uh, uh, with your courageous uh, way in which you approach your art, that uh, it's, a, it's an example and inspiration for everyone. So thank you so very much. Thank you, Pritya. Thank you. For me, it's the same. I, we, we must be uh, filled with hope. And not only, we, we must stay strong, really, really strong in this situation. But I know that we, we, will, go through, we will go through. I know it. I feel it. <laughs> I, feel, I feel it too. And I know with the support of all of you who are joining us and watching us today, uh, that our future is secured as well. So thank you all so much for joining us. And I hope, I hope we'll You'll be watching uh, November 21 when Sonia gives all of her her art to all of you. So thank you so much. Thank you. See you, see you next Saturday. Bye-bye. Thank you.